go, I used to laugh at you, and now all this is very believable. Uh -huh. All right, onward. What looks like a train station? After or... the automobile is phased out, which we hope to do very rapidly, we hope to build a new transportation system and also phase out all forms of aircraft except surveillance. Aircraft I mean, you helicopters. Have, you we think aircraft are no longer necessary. In fact, the skies are so jammed and the landing is so difficult and the speeds and the shockwave are no longer worth working on. I know the people in the aircraft business do not understand this, nor do they feel this, because they feel that all institutions tend to perpetuate themselves. We hope to phase out the airplane by desi designing transportation units that can move up to 2,000 miles an hour floating on a, a magnetic repulsive field or an air cushion. And in those huge trains of tomorrow, there'll be television, radio, amusement, art centers, classrooms, not a group of seats lined up as your trains are today, highly regimented society, whether you know it or not. This society will be different in its transportation means. If 40 or 50 people have to leave the train, we slow up to 100 miles an hour, lift off the passenger section, or slide it off and slide on a section with the passengers getting on. You don't have to stop the whole plane or the train. Today, when three people are getting off, you land the airplane and three or four people get off. In the future, we will just shove off those passengers getting <laughs> off and that freight leaving. Uh, uh, how will this go from, say, Miami to London? Uh, we, we then have an underwater project in which tunnels are suspended 125 feet beneath the surface of the sea. Therefore, you eliminate most of the ocean-going transportation system. You're not subject to the weather or anything else. This is part of the linear acceleration train that can take you anywhere in the world in just a few hours, safely, without snow, rain, being lost at sea, are all these to things, the weather. Are all these things you're saying, Jacques? Uh, could they be built with what we know today, or are some of these things, are you guessing, based on what we know today? No. All of these things can be built with what we know today. It would take ten years to change the surface of the earth, to rebuild the world into a second Garden of Eden. The choice lies with you. The stupidity of a nuclear arms race, the development of weapons, trying to solve your problems politically by electing this political party or that political party, that all politics is immersed in corruption. Let me say it again. Communism, socialism, fascism, the Democrats, the liberals, we want to absorb human beings, women's lib, all organizations that believe in a better life for man, there are no Negro problems or Polish problems or Jewish problems or Greek problems or women's problems. They're human problems. And uh, so, you know, don't just dismiss this. If he says it's possible, it's possible. What's this? Well, in times to come, most of you are probably familiar with the giant units that are used to move the rockets onto their launching platform, tremendous tractor systems. In the distant future, perhaps the next 15 or 20 years, huge tractors may be built with a nuclear reactor built in that can fuse the earth into canals and transportation ways. We can shape the earth by nuclear energy without mixing concrete, without having trucks and human beings leveling the concrete. We can do this today at 20 miles an hour if we wanted to. Shape the earth into highways, waterways, flood control systems, in a totally different, reorganized technology. All right, now. You have to use any of the systems today. Let me briefly say this. You have a bumper in front of your car, behind your car. But your society, your car's hit on the side also. You have safety belts and harnesses in your car. But that assumes that you're going to hit, be hit by the rear or in front. If you're hit on the side, you go right through the side of the windshield. What good are these approaches? They are designed by men that are cerebral insufficient. You've got to design a society with a bumper all around the car, phase out human drivers, put electronic guidance systems in cars, or eliminate the automobile and design a holistic transportation system. We must put our mind to this as we do to put a man on the moon. We must put our mind to the social problem. We wish to get away from politics. We wish to get away from the old world method of solving problems. If you can barely understand what it is I'm trying to say in this short period of time, please investigate socio cyber Are you saying that General Motors could build a safe car today, totally safe car, with the knowledge at hand? Yes, if they're given that assignment. They're not given that assignment. Well, because they're working on their own initiative to make more money.
They were only interested in, in look, if General Motors had to service their own cars, I can, I can tell you for certain that they would have two levers that you turn down and pull out the engine, shove it in a service unit, and you don't, to change a $3 spring in a car or a $2 part, you've got to do a $45 job on a small car just to pull the engine out. But if they had to surface the car, I can assure you that whole engine would slide out. You know they put a race car wheel on with one turn? That's the way your wheels would go on. You'd have bumpers all around. You'd have no chromium, no ornament. The chromium would be in the engine where you have chrome steel, tougher engine. In other words, the automobile companies have total, actually they have contempt. Let me say this again. All manufacturers have contempt for you to sell you the toothpaste. The products that they sell you are deliberately, deliberately designed to wear out break down so you have to continually service those things you notice that your telephone is pretty reliable well we here in america can think we can design things that don't wear out and don't break down and don't require maintenance at all yeah the instrument yes. the phone that stays forever you bet if the automobile companies had to maintain their cars it would be a phone, oh, yeah, the the phone company has to maintain the phone bet. that's why it's good that's why your units hold up I never thought of that. I don't. Most so a phone never, I mean, you know, operators can be bad. Yeah. This is going to be bad, but the phone itself... Well, it's the same for your TV sets, by the way. You mean if, if RCA, if everybody had to maintain their own... You bet. They'd all be... There would be automatic system which you pull out, shove in a replacement unit. If your engine breaks down, they pull out the engine, shove in a courtesy engine, and you take off. Why hold up the whole car when you need a battery job? If you did that in the Army Air Force, you couldn't <laughs> operate at all. Your society is really comprised of very stupid men. Let me say it again. All politicians, all lawyers, all businessmen will be phased out. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. It's not going to be a revolution. You don't need it. Our society cannot be maintained by this type of incompetency. It was great, the free enterprise system, about 35 years ago. That was the last of its usefulness. Now we've got to change our way of thinking or perish. Our system is dying. If Nixon remains in, it'll die in his lap. If a liberal group gets in, the society will fall. Our cities are going broke. We don't have the money nor the type of mentality required to save our society in politics or government.